We now take a look at another digital signature algorithm called Digital Signature Standard. Digital Signature Standard was published by National Institute of Standards and Technology as a federal information processing standard. This algorithm uses a secure hash algorithm. Shah, we have already learned. And the Digital Signature Standard was originally proposed in 1991 and it was revised in 1993 after public feedback. We'll take a look at the steps in digital signature. So we have a sender, we call him user A and we have a receiver who is user B. So we have three steps in digital signature standard. One is we have to create the public key. So that is first step, public and private key for user A. And the second step is using this private key, we need to create a signature. A signature is getting created. We can call that signature to be R comma S. And once when user A wants to send a message to user B, he will be sending that message plus the signature to user B. And user B will be validating this signature upon receipt of this message. So that is the third step. So these are the three steps. We'll go step by step and understand this algorithm. I also have an uh, animation for you to understand this better. Say we have user A and user B, they are communicating using an insecure channel. It means we have a third party or a hacker listening to that communication. The very first step is user A should uh, generate global public key components, PQG, and a public key. So you can consider all these things to be public, that is P, Q, G, and Y. And he also selects a private key X. So after generation of a public key and a private key, he's going to share the public key components and the public key Y with everyone. So this is known to everyone. This is in the public domain. Whereas private key is very secret. X is very secret to user A. So once when he wants to send a message of $10, what he does is he takes the message he now creates this signature R comma S using the private key. A private key is involved in creating the digital signature. Now the message that is the plain message plus the digital signature is sent to our receiver. The receiver will take the signature. He will use the global public key components and the public key of user A and then he will validate the signature. If the signature is valid, he can very well be sure that the message is from an authenticated source and the integrity of the message is also maintained. So very first thing that you're going to look at is how to generate public key components and how to generate public key and private key for user A. And even before going into that, we'll take a look at uh, this diagram that is given in your textbooks. We'll understand this diagram. This diagram conveys uh, uh, the same meaning that we have seen in the last slide. We'll take a look at this. So this is the message. Let's assume message is $10. We take the message, we feed it to a hash function, say SHA algorithm, and we get this message digest, which is small m. And we also select a random integer k, and we feed it to this signature generation module. The other inputs for signature generation module are the public global key components, p, q, g, p, q, and g, and the private key, that is x. So all these inputs are fed into the signature module to generate the signature, digital signature R comma S. After generating the signature, the message $10, let's assume, is added with the signature, right? So signature plus the message is sent to the receiver. The receiver receives the message $10 and he uses the same hash algorithm, SHA algorithm. And then he computes whatever that is uh, H of M. H of M is nothing but h of capital m is nothing but the message digest small m so he gets small m and he takes s and r this is the signature that is coming in right so s and r is being fed to the verification module again the receiver also uses the global public key components and public key of user a so with all these things say public key components public key of user a the message digest and then the signature which is which is being fed to the verification module and the digital signature is verified here
So we'll now go into the steps of the algorithm. We'll first see how to generate global public key components P, Q and G. So P is a prime number and the range of P is between 2 power L minus 1 and 2 power L. And it, it should be anything between 5, 12 and 1024 bits. So that is the value of L given here. So what should be the value of L? You consider the value of L to be anything greater than or equal to 5, 12 and less than or equal to 1024. And P should be selected as a prime number. The next value that uh, user A or the center is going to select is Q. Q is a prime divisor of P. That is, it should be a prime number and it should divide P. It should divide P minus 1. I am sorry. Q should be a prime divisor of P minus 1. And the value of Q should be anything between 2 power 159 and it should be less than 2 power 160. So the next value that is selected is Q. Q is nothing but a prime divisor of P minus 1 and the value of Q should be between 2 power 159 and 2 power 160. And the third value is G. G is being computed as H power P minus 1 by Q mod P. See we know P and Q that is the prime number and the prime divisor of P. Whereas H is an any integer that lies between 1 and P minus 1. So that is the value of H. It can be any integer within this range. And another important condition is H power P minus 1 by Q mod P should be greater than 1. See, if this is not greater than 1, you have to go and select another value for H. So these three steps lead us to identifying the global public components PQG. What next? We have to identify the public key and the private key. So let's see how you identify a private key. The user's private key X is nothing but a value that he selects between 0 and Q. Q is the prime divisor of P minus 1. So we know that, right? What is Q? Q is the prime divisor of P minus 1. Select a value between 0 and Q that becomes X. That is the private key of the sender. And uh, what is this y? y is the public key. We compute y by using g power x mod p. x is the private key. g and p are from the public key components that we have already selected. So this is p and this is g. So using g, x and p, we can compute the public key. So the global public uh, key components are p, q and g. This is global public key components. The public key of the user is y and the private key is x. So all these values are computed, the keys are ready. We look at this animation, we will understand what we have done. So user A has computed the global public key components PQG. He has also identified a public key y and a private key x. So after identifying these things, he will be sharing the public key components and the public key with all of them. So that what it means is it is available it is available to the public. So after this, what next? We have to see how this user generates a digital signature, how the signature is getting generated using all these components. We'll take a look at these steps. So generating the signature is what we are going to see. So for that, he has to select a random number k which lies between 0 and q. So let's see how he generates R. R is nothing but G power this random number mod P mod Q. We know what is G, P, Q from our global public key components. And after he generates R, he will be generating S, the next part of the signature. S is nothing but K inverse of H. This is the hash function. So we are going to take the message, pass it to our hash function. And we are going to add that result with X. X is nothing but the private key of the user. R we have already generated here mod Q. So what is this K inverse? We know what is K, right? We know K mod Q. What is K inverse? It is nothing but the multiplicative inverse of K with respect to mod Q. So K into K inverse mod q should be equal to 1. So we are finding the k inverse here. That is it.
So that's how we compute signature R and S. Let me repeat that R is equal to G power K mod P mod Q. G, P and Q is known from the global public key components. K is the random integer that is LX between 0 and Q. What is S? S is nothing but K inverse. K inverse is the modular multiplicative inverse of K with respect to mod Q. And H of M is the hash function, the SHA algorithm, which takes in the message and creates the message digest M. And X is the private key of the sender and R is what he computes mod Q. So now our signature is ready. So after the signature is ready, this plain text message M will be concatenated with the signature and sent to the receiver. Now let's see how this receiver validates our message. So what all we have accomplished, when you take a look at this visualization, we have finished finding these three things, global public key components, public key and private key. And now we have also computed this uh, signature. Signature is also done. The next thing is the signature plus the message will be sent to the user B. The third step is we have to verify the signature, whether the signature is valid. So user B will be performing certain steps to verify the signature. Let's take a look at this, uh, look at these steps. So these are the steps. So what is being sent from our uh, sender, say user A is there, right? Whatever he sends is, he sends the message and the signature R comma S. So when this is being received at the user's end, say the receiver is user B, say receiver is user B, when it is received at the user's end, let us assume that it is received as M dash, S dash and R dash. So M dash corresponds to M, R dash corresponds to R and S dash corresponds to S. So this is how it is being received and how user B validates this signature is he computes these values. He takes whatever S that is coming in. He finds the inverse of that with respect to mod Q. We know P, Q, G. These are public uh, components. And Y is also the public key. This is known to everyone. Public components. So with S that is coming in. So the digital signature that is receiving is R dash and S dash. And the message that is receiving is M dash. So using S dash, he finds the inverse with respect to mod Q. Q is also known to him. So that is W. The next value he computes is U1. U1 is nothing but the hash. Take M dash, feed it to the hash function SHA algorithm and you get the message digest. You multiply that with W. W is given here. And mod Q, Q is again from the public domain. Now he computes U2. What is U2? U2 is nothing but R. R is part of the signature that he has received. W is something that he has, uh, he has already uh, computed. Mod Q, Q is again from the public key domain. So after completing U1 and U2, you should complete V. What is V? V is nothing but G per U1, Y per U2, mod P, the entire thing mod Q. So do we know all these things? What is U1? U1 we have computed just now. U2 we have computed. What is this G? G is from the public key domain. What is Y? Y is the public key of the user. It's also known to everybody, right? And what is P? P is again from the public key components. Q is again from the public key components. So this is, uh, it is very much possible for user B or the receiver to compute B. So finally, the signature is a valid signature if the value computed V is equal to R dash. So if he's able to prove that V is equal to the R dash, uh, that is R is nothing but part of the signature we have received, then the user can very well conclude that the signature is valid. This is the digital signature standard algorithm. And given the references here for P, Q, G, X and Y, just to say that we have already computed this, and also R and S I have pasted here just to understand that whatever we are using here R and S has already been computed. I hope you all have understood what is the digital signature standard algorithm. Thank you.